Yeah. How are you feeling? <clears throat> Better. Better. You got the COVID? No. <laughs> no, but I have some, some sort of cold. Because the test is negative, maybe I have it and it just didn't show up. Who knows? But you know, I had my RSV shot. Trying not to give anyone. Thank you. Cold germs. Two days after I had my RSV shot, I came down with a whole bronchial, cold, miserable thing. Yeah. I, I didn't have it, but whatever. The COVID shot, and the next day I was. In. I'm yeah. doing it on Monday. I think it's still like just the I, double. Just, just get double it over again. Yeah. Right, that's what I'm doing. But I did feel pretty funny for about twelve. Did you? Did you do it through the wellness? Okay, so you have to do it on Friday. Yes, the cards, the state. I've been doing that forever. Only if you don't go on Friday. Now. Are you going to um, the Center for Vermont Economic Development the Council? Yeah, and we'll be Thursday? Yeah. <clears throat> I apparently have an award to yeah. accept. <laughs> Excellent. I was wondering, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, reminder. What? Well, just there are some that needs to be listed. Yeah, Ben, is he, I take it? Uh, I do. Mean, is he? I know. I know. Uh, I thought it was just the one that Lyman. I know he's trained. Yeah. And and he's my savior. He's also volunteered to do the conference. Did you retire? So that's great. He's from from the the yeah. 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 Yeah.
So move, guys. Thank you. Second. Second. Jenna. Okay. Um, any questions, edits, updates on those minutes? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. Aye. opposed? Okay, great. We've approved aye. the meeting minutes from September 11th. All right. Um, we are really happy that you're here today, Chase, from Student Leadership. Do you want to tell us what Student Leadership does and what uh, your role is there? Right now, we're in the middle of processing how to kind of make students uh, quarterly awards better and focus on bringing more engagement within them instead of less, uh, I guess, dismay going towards the awards because not a lot of students like them. So we're trying to really hit hard right now in the beginning of student leadership to better the awards, to make them more good, better, I guess. Um, and then we kind of help bring voice from our programs because we have a representative from each program on leadership um, and we are kind of getting feedback from each program on what they want to see or what they like is what's happening and then we bring it to the facilitators of the meeting and kind of build off from there. What year are you in? Uh, this is my senior year. I go to Spalding. Okay. Uh, this is my first year at CBCC. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions for Chief? So, um, and, oh yeah, go ahead, Guy. So, yeah, uh, you, you talked about awards a little bit. What, what is the biggest angst about the awards? Um, people, I guess, don't students don't want to kind of engage in them, I guess, because of kind of stage fright, I feel like is the number one problem we have. And the like less, uh, the less amount of award, like focusment time on students. Like they, we had a poll done that students thought it was less about the award, less about the student being acknowledged and a, it was more of a student popularity contest. <clears throat> So we've done some changes and adjustments to kind of focus it back on this student was recognized for this um, responsibility. And I think we've implemented the school's values. It's like respect all the five and we're having each award focused on that. I think one award is respect and uh, it's integrity and honesty. I think we've put to one but all four award ceremonies, we're going to kind of focus the students on this student was selected by their instructor because they demonstrated integrity and honesty very well throughout this quarter. <clears throat> it's kind of brought back in there. Who gets to like nominate or decide who gets the award? Um, so we were, we had it as students were voting okay. and we kind of, got feedback that that was not the best mm -hmm. sort of pick because it was more of someone in the class said, vote for me, I deserve the award. And then it was a, okay, he won the award, we'll vote for him. But now we're using, we took the idea of using the school values and bringing them into light. So now the teacher chooses the student that has exemplified that award and they have, I think it's like three sentences, three to four sentences. The teacher has to make a quick summary about why this student exemplified this certain type of quality or trait in the order that they were assigned. Nice. It um, brings the achievement to life. I'm sorry. Yes. Ultimately, who decides? Um, I think it goes to admin ultimately, I believe so. Um, and it like, we are trying to make them more we want to exemplify the students there and then after the student awards get finished we want to like do it do it like a game or something games that like engage the student body as a whole and try to get people to have like an icebreaker at the first quarterly awards and then instead of uh, the student body saying i don't really want to go back to quarterly awards they are i'm excited for quarterly awards next quarter and we are excited to be there type thing so we are like trying to engage and get the students as 
I want to say productive, but engaged, I guess, in the uh, activity in the quarterly awards as a whole. I might have missed it, but one of the, I think, roles was about building center-wide community because we have yeah. amazing community inside of programs, mm -hmm. yeah. but some folks, what we see year after year is feedback that they don't really know anyone outside of their program or they don't know what else happens here. So this yeah. is one way. Yeah, we're trying to build like a team instead of, I guess it was like last year, I'm not, I haven't been here last year, but last mm -hmm. year there was like, uh, I guess, I don't want to say hate, but things between the programs that made mm -hmm. people upset, students didn't like each other. So now we're kind of do some team building activities and team building games to try to like bring the student body as a whole to kind of engage with each other. Just make everyone look so. So, Chase, are you part of a leadership team overall yeah. so that because you have these great, you present so well and you have these, this great knowledge of Yes, I'm on the um, leadership board, the student leadership board. Uh, we meet every Monday. Well, we met last Tuesday because we had a Monday off. Um, but we meet every week um, and we have a representative from each program. And every single time we have a meeting, we usually have a feedback prompt that we speak to our class about. So we basically go back to our class mm -hmm. and facilitate what we had from the meeting and then what we facilitated from the meeting, we bring to light in the student leadership meeting. Great, thanks, Great. Really great. Um, Go ahead, Guy. Yeah, just a comment. Uh, you know, thank you for bringing that leadership skill to the table. I think that's important uh, because that's what we look for as, as a board or partially anyway. And, uh, and your leadership is gonna, I think, remove that uh, stage fright you talked about a little while ago. So thank you. And for um, the rest of the board, I think the plan is that student leadership, that you guys agreed with your advisor that you would take turns coming to the board meetings, is that right? Uh, right now, yeah, but we are, um, one of our facil facilitators is looking for someone to kind of stay okay. more consistent <clears throat> if no one wants to. Um, we like you. Yeah, I, I would like to stay. I gotta speak to my facilitator about it. Um, I enjoy things and kind of engaging. Um, but yeah, right now the plan is to find someone or find a couple people that want to rotate or find a more permanent person that like to come every meeting. And doesn't have to be either or, right? There is a permanent person, but then different people from your programs can still come. Yeah, if, um, I think the plan is that. If we do have someone that's more permanent, we are gonna, I guess, let the students in leadership still, if they wanna come, they can come and, and it'll be just good, I guess. What are you guys working on right now in your classes? Um, in my class, uh, in emergency services one, we are prepping for, we have Expo coming in, Zora Technology is one of the programs on Thursday. Um, so we're kind of prepping to get them engaged in what we want them to uh, kind of see what we do. And um, we have a couple quizzes <laughs> coming up and we have our actually unit two exam on Friday. So it's not a big study right now. Any idea what you want to do next year? Uh, so next year I'm either I'm either gonna hopefully join uh, Ambulant Service full time and just work my entire year, or uh, enlist, not enlist, geez, uh, apply for Vermont State University and go and get my bachelor's degree in business and management mm -hmm. and go to early college too. Yeah. Excellent. You can always come back as an adult student. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Anything else you want to tell us before we let you go? Oh, I can leave. You, you can, you are welcome you, to stay for the entire prisoner. program, but we don't, yeah, we don't hold you prisoner. <laughs> Wait, time down. <laughs> <laughs> stay. <laughs> yeah, if you stay, then you, you get to participate in the discussions that happen. Yeah. No pressure. Uh, no okay. pressure. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's um, all right, next up we are, we're on agenda item 2.3, the um, 
the resolutions for the Vermont School Boards Association. Uh, I think I can take a stab at introducing those to Laura, but you might, you might be better suited to do okay. so. But that, however you want to handle it, I'm okay, okay. to do it either I'll, way. I'll take, I'll, I'll take a stab at it and you correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, Great. that so, sounds good. Um, yeah, sorry, we're on vacation. I shouldn't have even called that. Um, so the Vermont School Boards Association is the statewide organization of school boards in Vermont, self-explanatory, and um, every year at their annual meeting, they adopt certain resolutions that sort of represent their policy position on behalf of Vermont school boards. Uh, and so their upcoming annual meeting is um, the end of next week, I think, October 26th and 27th. And I believe, Lemon, are you going oh, yeah. as our representative? Yeah. Um, so our hope tonight is we will take some a vote on the different resolutions for the Vermont School Boards Association, and that way Lyman will know how we, as a collective Central Vermont Career Center Board, um, want to vote on those resolutions. Right. Has anyone had a chance to look at the resolutions or have any questions? Made from all over the state. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Guy. So, so Flora, I. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you uh, sitting on the board. That's a, you know, another heavy lift for you. Um, I, had a, I had a hard time understanding the resolution around the unemployment piece and the educational fund for, for certain staff. Can you explain that a little bit or? So I, I think if, if, if it's okay with Jill, what, what I would like to do is just go in order in each resolution, because I think it will be faster. And then we ask the questions with each resolution. Would that make sense for you two guys? Sure, yeah. And then, sure, and then yeah. we can provide that feedback to, so Lyman knows how to, how to vote on it. And, and then okay. in each resolution, we can do, the, we can do the, the questions and I can be like super quick in the in the packet you have like the entire you know the entire resolution what i what i was suggesting is that we would just go uh, one by one right now like there because they were areas so for example resolution one can i start there uh, jill and then you can call sure. yeah okay so the resolution so one was like submitted you. by Ms. Boy Valley School District. Can you hear me okay? I hear some background, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, I was just making sure we found it because we um, well, let's make sure we're on the right page. Well, it's after okay. that because each one is broken down after that. Yeah, each one is fully written out. So right. there's like the. Yeah, the, so what I'm going to do is just like, read the where areas and, and just focus on that part on resolution one from uh, Miss Coy Valley School District. Does that the requirement for school district in Vermont to pay a federal grant assessment to the Vermont State Teachers Retirement System for Teachers Fund Day by the federal grant shall be eliminated? We, the undersigned, hereby express our support for this resolution and call upon the Vermont State Legislature to take swift action to rectify the unjust burden on school districts and ensure the optimal utilization of federal grant funds for the benefit of. Vermont students. Usually that part is the one that becomes the resolution. So that's what I'm just going to concentrate on that. On, on that. So were there any questions on that one? The recommendation of the board is, is to do not pass, but at the meeting, all of the resolutions are voted regardless of what the recommendation of the board or the comment or the recommendation of the uh, resolutions committee was. I see Lyman, your hand is up. Laura, do you feel comfortable giving us a, a cliff note version of each one of these as we go? Yes. Uh, okay. So in, in the first one, if there's no questions, I, I can just give you a, exactly what you just said, a cliff note. Uh, uh, the board looked at this uh, and took this position because they feel that they needed more information. I, I wrote a little thing because we're going to go through this at the meeting. So I'm just going to use that same wording to not, so you're getting a preview. So if there's confusion, I can adjust this for the meeting. So it, the board took this position because they felt they needed more information about the assessment before deciding whether they should be, whether it should be eliminated. Many felt that they could support a study to understand the full extent of the grant assessment and the impact that eliminating the assessment will have in the retirement system, but not outright eliminating without knowing the full impact on, on taking that decision. 
So it's to the pleasure of the board if you want to call the vote. It, is the federal yeah. grant assessment like a fee? I, I, Jen, I'm, okay. I yeah, so, it, and this was, this was complicated in my board too. So, so yeah, they, we, we pay uh, a fee every time and I, probably Jody can speak to this better than, than me. What, what mm -hmm. I'm gonna not try to do is try to resolve questions that, that the burden was on the Miskoy Valley School District to resolve mm -hmm. before sending the, the resolution to us just because we are not like a, like I don't have I, I I didn't do all the research I can ask their questions on on, on some of it but I, I don't have all of the all of the answers I can speak to specific questions I don't know if that makes it even more confusing but you know what I mean yeah. when you submit a resolution the burden is on the district to to answer the question so I did a write to the chair and that's the process and we ask them to amend it or to ask for a study and 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 they decided that they would just leave the resolution that is and they were fine with how we had addressed it so that's all i have to report on on that one but it is a fee that so every federal grant you pay a fee when you're when so you don't get the full benefit of the actual grant okay. which is controversial right <laughs> Okay. Thank you. So, how does the board? So you can. How how do we give guidance to to Lyman? Are you guys okay with the recommendation of the VSBA board, or do you feel differently? Well, if there wasn't enough information, then yeah. I would support that. I wouldn't support their finding for the next one that you're going to talk mm -hmm. about. Yeah. So a motion. Yeah. So a motion, Jill. I would let you call for the motion to to accept the recommendation, or or you can just say a motion. No action. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, do I have a motion that that Central Rockford Center School District Board would? Um, Support so the long. do not pass position on this current resolution. On the Valley. On the Valley. Resolution yeah. proposal number one. Guy moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Guy moved. Guy moved. Okay. Guy and Jana. Um, <coughs> all right. All those in favor of our position of do not pass, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So on resolution two, uh, again, I'll just read quickly. All surplus monies in the Vermont State Education Fund be used to help school districts defray the cost of unemployment on insurance so that support staff professionals can obtain unemployment benefits during this time of school break and vacancies, thereby helping to assure say professionals have a living wage and have therefore motivated to fill employment vacancies and keep our schools fully staffed uh, provide individual school funds to support the arts and enrichment programs for the students in vermont <clears throat> uh, the cliff note on that one is that uh, the board took this position because the members were reluctant to tell the legislature how to spend surplus monies without considering all needs the members explained that their districts suffer an annualized pay cycle to their support staff another question that came up was that around collecting unemployment and whether support staff are able to do so many also felt that we should be strategic with the one-time money so the the way that they were asking us it was very focused on the arts and uh, um, we had the chair of the board at our meeting he was part of our committee and he understood this took it back to his district it, but they chose not to amend uh, the resolution so that is the cliff note of why we decided <coughs> to not uh, to recommend to do not pass but i'm happy to take questions regardless uh, of the recommendation of the board because we can make our own decision right any comments or questions on that one no well it seems that we don't you're hesitant to tell the legislature what to do is one and that the staff has opportunity to get unemployment anyway you know my concern is it's so hard to 
maintain paraprofessionals and others who work in schools. And so any way we can support their engagement as members of the community who can earn a living wage um, should be supported. So I would vote to pass this. Yeah, and Jenna, I can I can tell you that one of the conversations that we had is that different districts around our area it already that it shouldn't be that our especially our support staff should be making a living wage and it should not just be left that you know the surplus money for them to be so the the contracts with our with our support staff should be elevated without this kind of like without having to do this right and especially right. because it's sent that it should just be for the arts part so that took so there was no objection about what you're saying that they should be paid more money well again you're saying they should be getting that but then they're not or it wouldn't have been there yeah but here it's asking you to use the spend the surplus monies without considering all the needs of the school. So let's say your district decides to use the surplus money differently, right? Right, right, I agree. It shouldn't be yeah. all <laughs> surplus money. I agree with that. So it, I just hate for that to be a do not pass because of that one line. Yeah. But I guess. And Guy, did you have your hand up? Anyone else? I, I do, yeah. Uh, our, are a lot of the support staff under uh, contracts? Uh, <coughs> contracts? Talking about our district, we don't have a lot of unemployment. Our support staff, staff does not go to unemployment. There's vacation and summer. Wait, could you say that again? Do they our get paid for staff, vacation? Our support staff has the ability to. Um, Yes, get paid throughout. They can say how much of their check they want to withhold, and they can get paid throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but none of them go on. Most of them have summer jobs or or vacation jobs that they enjoy. Same for most of our districts. I looked around, and most of our districts don't are you know they are able to have an annualized pay cycle, but they're not able to collect unemployment. They Correct. Don't. Okay. And I think that's one of the, the benefits. It is a benefit to the position of being school year employees. A lot of our, maybe not our staff, but a lot of staff members take summers off to be home with their children. So it, it's. Right. All right, I'll take it back. No, I, I, I don't disagree with, and I, and I also would hate to just leave a vacuum from school boards to try to tell the legislature what we think they should do, but I'm not sure this. This does it enough. It's not mm -hmm. quite right. And it doesn't sound like the need to force point like is equal across all districts. That right. this would benefit everybody. Right. Therefore, Therefore do not motion. pass. All right, Jana's made a motion, do not pass. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't want to be the one to make that motion. All right, someone make a motion. <laughs> I, I can make the motion if that's helpful. Okay. Yes, thank you, Floor. All right, do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, all those in favor of our um, recommendation do not pass on resolution number two. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. To abstain. I abstain. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Okay. So all on right. That. On resolution, uh, on resolution three from Addison Northwest, uh, the BSBA, uh, they have since, uh, they're gonna submit uh, an amendment. Uh, I can't give you the amendment because it's gonna be submitted in the floor. So uh, what, I, what I can tell you is that the, um, because it was not clear, we went back to Addison uh, Northwest to bring an amendment to the floor. Uh, and they're going to do that. So you're, we're just going to have to trust Lyman <laughs> to make a decision with the with the amendment. I can tell you that the amendment sort of clears some of the some of the confusion. And I can actually let me see why not. I can read uh, just a couple of things that they SBN list the support of the Vermont Superintendents Association and Vermont Councils of Special Education administrators 
Vermont Business Managers Association and work with the legislators by January 2025 to provide recommendations for changes to the governor and their appointed state board of education and secretary of agency of education so that Vermont students receive the benefits of VSBA current ongoing resolutions, blah, blah, blah. So right now it was just too, yeah, too much of a prescription too. So they are clearing it so that they, they ask is clear. It's just not clear right now what they are asking us to do. Right, providing recommendations for changes to the governor isn't very specific. Changes it, to what? Like, to what? What, the, what are the changes? Yeah, what changes are the changes? What, what are the? It is so. Because the the a lot of the whereas is about the cognia sort of fa failures of software systems at the agency, <laughs> and then it, then it goes to just enlisting the help of these fellow organizations to recommend changes, but right. it doesn't. Yeah, so I, I don't disagree that there's, I think a, a VSBA and the VSA and the VCSEA and VBMA should all work together all the time. I don't think they can about anything, but I don't, yeah. I don't know that that's specific enough. Yeah. Um, if the amendment clears up recommendation for changes to the whatever they're asking in the whereas, the e-finance software or whatever mm -hmm. are we at that point comfortable with supporting that or i guess i, I don't that I don't put you to... in a tough spot what's that personally i think that puts you in a tough spot if we don't have all the information sitting in front of us yeah i mean they all leave you hang blown in the wind and i don't know that well it's up to you i appreciate that <laughs> but yeah, i but don't I, know but I... a smart way for us to move forward or any organization <laughs> And changes to block grant funding for special education. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of stuff. Though. So much. Oh, and they want to revise school quality standards. I mean, we all know that the Cognia testing was a mess, you know, um, and that there are data issues around systems, but this doesn't do it. Yeah, but, and what I want to suggest that, sorry, Jill, because I can't totally see <coughs> you to like raise my hand, <laughs> is that is that by appointing Lyman to be our voting member as a district, we have a vote. And, that, and I think I would trust Lyman, I, you know, Jill will be at the meeting, I'll be at a meeting, Jody will be at the meeting. I will trust Lyman to make a wealth informed decision with the information presented at the meeting so that we are able to use our our one vote as a board as best as we can, right? Instead of tying Lyman's hands right now and just saying, just vote no, because we didn't. I, I just, that's just my suggestion, but uh, I'm fine either way. So we could say no action because if we say do not pass, even though it, yes. if it gets amended, he's gonna be locked into saying no. Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. So then why are we doing this? So can we have a motion to take no action? That's why we're doing this. To take no action. Does that mean? Or do we leave it up I to Lyman? Yeah, or does that mean you we're just to, not gonna? We get to do it all. I think you get to do it all, and so we just say, you know, we could just say eh, we're boring our new student already. So sorry. Yeah. When are they presenting the new language? At the meeting, because that's just how it works. I, it just they present the amended language with 60% of copies so that everybody can have there's a process for it and they'll present it at four o'clock on Thursday the 26th and then will there be time for discussion amongst yes there'll be the, time for discussion the representatives, so yeah and I'll anyone get, gets I'll get a feel for yeah yeah the, and it's not buying like these are just the VSBA agreeing that's what they're going to advocate for it doesn't actually right make it so Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're not discuss so we so end we the conversation to, to stop discussion. Do we make a motion to allow me to yeah. make the decision? I allow I move that we allow Lyman to make the decisions when you know next week when he has the opportunity to represent our board. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.
Okay. Uh, resolution four was submitted by the Norwich District. Uh, uh, the VSBA calls upon the General Assembly to examine the impact and feasibility of raising the non residential tax rate to the same rate as the homestead tax rate in every town where the non residential tax rate is lower than the homestead tax rate. I think this one, uh, to be clear in the cliff notes, uh, it was a process thing that ended up being do not pass. The resolutions committee was, had not taken no action because they were hoping to get some clarification. Uh, we are not going to get an amendment, but uh, the board at the time when we were making this decision felt that the school district gets to determine education spending for their district. And if the results in a homestead tax rate that is higher than the non homestead tax rate, then that is their choice. This did not mean that the system isn't working properly was one of the comments, but this is a person for our district just to have some background on this too, is that there's more than 80 towns in the state affected by this. I personally don't think this is a bad thing, but you guys got had all the language there. It is not really affects our district as much as some districts with more of the uh, a, a bigger uh, non-residential tax rate. Us specifically yeah, go ahead, has Michelle. Le yeah, has less. CBCCSD has less impact than it does. Are there any of the our towns that are blocked like that? I don't believe it. I suspect that Warren yeah. would be one of those towns. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to go. I'd have to look that up. Yeah. I didn't think any of the I didn't think any town with a ski area would fall into that. I didn't think so either. Maybe not. I. I <clears throat> this has nothing to do, I don't know, necessarily to do with us. No. Mm -hmm. but philosophically, I disagree with it. Yeah. So um, I would fight that. And then, you have a hand okay, Guy and then Lyman. Yeah, just a, a, a comment. I was, I was interested in hearing that the, the states around us uh, don't differentiate, which I thought was interesting. I mean, I think it's a, you know, it's probably a larger conversation than a local one. And I, and I think there are some some implications, but um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about this. Uh, you know, it's a interesting topic. Go ahead. Just uh, quickly, the the word non-residential in this case is not second home, but commercial space, or is it? Separate? No, it's not a state. Or, it's it, well, that's not true. No. If you own two homes, like I, if I, I own two properties, I can only claim one as homestead. Right. The other one I have to pay so, on homestead. So non-residential is not. Right. It's not residential. It's, yeah, it's not. not it's the, right. It's the wrong terminology. But. So this is like my. This is what I. This is my day job. Like this. <laughs> this power, if they asked, if they passed a report, like I, I, my team would have to write this report. Yeah, so non-residential is everything that's not that homestead. Okay. And also, like, if you have a homestead, but you have, like, 20 acres, you can claim your two acres in your house site. Right. That's your homestead. That would be taxed at the house, the homestead rate, and then the rest of it would be non-homestead. Right. Okay. So it's everything. It's commercial, land. Everything. And you, and you can play all kinds of games with that. You can oh, yeah. Land yeah, trust, yeah. And I, you can, I knew there was this all kinds different of thing games. between the homestead and <clears throat> the second home. I just have never heard that as being non-residential. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was super interested in what you thought about it, Jill. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, it, it is, it is, it is huge issue. It, that was not the intent when these, when Act 60 and Act 68 were passed, the intent was certainly that um, homestead properties would have a lower tax rate. Um, and it's just over time and spending and values and things like that, then, then there are non-residential rates that are lower than homestead. And so it does have, especially for folks who claim a homestead and maybe act and get the homestead rate, or maybe you claim the homestead and get property tax credit, but if they claim homestead and they get a higher rate, it's sort of a disincentive. So there's folks who win or lose on either side of that equation. Mm -hmm. um, everyone is supposed to file their homestead every single year and mm -hmm. get the homestead rate on their on their house site. But certainly um, there are towns where the homestead is higher and for folks who are not gonna get that property tax income adjustment, then it's not 
there's not as much incentive for them to declare that because they'd end up paying a higher tax rate. So I do think it's something the legislature should should look at. Um, it's interesting coming from this sector because the education fund is like a closed loop. So if you push down the non-residential rate, no, if you push down one, the other taxpayers have to make up for that somehow. It's all still got to add up to the same amount the other one needs. But I think I don't. I, I honestly have no opinion. I, for all that, I don't have an opinion. I think it's, it would be interesting for them to look at. But and if it doesn't impact our district, then if we're going to this on behalf of our district, um, maybe that's maybe mm -hmm. for agnostic. That's where I don't know. Go. Yeah. It's like tax, right? Tax so, rate. So, or, no. It's the same yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Like you can knock the rate down. You just have to collect more money. It, mm -hmm. so. Guy, were you saying something? Sorry. I, I, you know, that's why I said it's a little bit more complicated than the way it's being presented, because I also think there are other things like uh, land use rates and stuff like that, that I'm not sure that the states around us even, you know, so I don't know the, the complexities of what one state does versus the other. So to say that the states around us are consistent in terms of how they do it might not be, you know, you're probably comparing apples and oranges, but I'm not sure. But I, I, I think it's worth you know taking a look at, but probably beyond our uh, our pay grade right now. That's sort of where we ended, Norwich and that's problem, what. It? It's what? It's a Norwich problem. Yeah. It's not a. It's a town by town. What are we saying for? Yeah, I, I think that the the board ended up sort of in the same position that we that we are right now. I think it's I I personally think it's a it's a worth uh, an issue that is worth looking at, just at least understanding it. But whether that is a study or actually, I do it. I don't have a strong opinion like you just said, Jill. I think that it is something that is worth at least taking a look at. Yeah. It doesn't impact our district. As it does in Park Hardwood, some, yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't impact the rest of our towns. So we could just go with the, what the, what the recommendation was, or take no action. That would be Long my. Nope. <laughs> 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 All right, so do we have a motion either to take no action or do not pass or pass? I would make a motion to take no action. I don't want to be the one making it, but I will. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Thanks, floor guy. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll take no action on that one. I think it'll be an interesting discussion. That we'll yeah, yeah. I think okay. It'll probably yeah. be a lengthy discussion. Yeah, later. yeah. And again, the burden will be in Norwich to answer a lot of questions because this a lot of questions came up from this. Uh, okay, moving to five. This one was super clear i thought resolution five the bsba from winooski school district urges the general assembly and congress to champion the health and well-being of vermont youth by enhancing legislation that supports our youth's mental health and protects them against intentional self-harm and ensures adequate funding for any programs or requirements that are mandated by enacted legislation further further the bsba calls upon governor the governor to develop the comprehensive plan to support the protected and protect youth mental health through meaningful collaboration among the administration schools designated agency and other community partners and the recommendation was to pass this as a as a regular resolution which means it's a resolution that we revisit every year to see if it's still need i move that we support it that we pass it. I second that. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to pass it. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. And then the other resolutions that sort of finishes the resolution submitted by different districts, the other resolutions were all uh, prepared by the resolutions committee. 
in in this resolution sir prepared by resolutions committee either because it was something that we had to dealt with uh in the during the session or recommendations from seeing the landscape of education for the next year in uh, and by landscape i mean the future of education through the year in the legislation so number six is uh, pretty self-explanatory supports the bsba supports the ban on sale of flavored cigarettes, flavored e-cigarettes, and flavored substance that contain nicotine are otherwise intended to use in e-cigarettes. It passes a regular resolution. It, I can tell you more why this was important, but... Do you want me to tell you more, or...? Sure, no. No? Okay. No. 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 Yes, don't. It's what do we think about kids to have it cigarettes? <laughs> Mass marketing. Right. Or yeah. yeah. Child marketing. Yeah. Yeah. This is something that we dealt with last year and then the second yeah. bill sat on somebody's wall. So we are we know that it's gonna come up this year, so we really wanna be prepared and we didn't have a specific language. So that's why this is coming in front of you. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to pass as a regular resolution? I would make a motion to pass as a regular okay. resolution. Second. I'll second it, Guy. Thanks, Guy. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? I think the ayes have it. Terry or Juliana, did you guys vote? <laughs> Okay. okay. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to be sure. All right. So that's okay. Uh, number seven. Resolution, resolution seven the General Assembly must act to bring Vermont tuition reimbursement policy and practices into compliance with the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in the Carson versus Mexican without violating the compelled support clauses in Article 3 of Chapter 1 of the Vermont Constitution. Uh, and I can tell you, you know, if we submitted this resolution because I don't know how to say it in few words, uh, because if the leg legislature failed to address this issue, uh, we failed last last year. It passed in the House, but it didn't pass on the Senate. And without legislative action, be, Vermont will continue to send taxpayer dollars to religious schools in violation with the Vermont Constitution and its support. Clauses. I'm not a lawyer, so that's. It. But but mainly we will continue to discriminate, and we have two systems uh, that don't comply with the rules. <laughs> I move that we accept it. Okay. Jenna moves that we pass as a regular resolution. Do I have a second? Okay. I'll second. We don't have to. No. I will. Okay. All right. Second. I want to right finish now. reading something. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Any opposed? Okay. Great. So pass as well. Thank you. And uh, last uh, resolution eight. Uh, it was uh, also by the by the committee. The BSBA calls on the General Assembly to prohibit the use of restraint and seclusion in any learning environment that receives public funds from the state of Vermont, except when there is a threat of imminent danger. And that's the important part to remember, imminent danger of serious physical harm to the student or others, and when it occurs in a matter that protects the safety of all children. Further, the BSBA calls, through, uh, calls for thorough data reporting requirements that will provide student demographic information and the development and implementation of statewide technical assistance to promote positive development of youth through evidence-based developmentally appropriate programs. Technical assistance should address consistent and accurate reporting to include demographic information. Happy to elaborate, but give you the clip now if you want. Floor, yes why no? did the resolutions? Oh, sorry. Why did the resolutions committee recommend do not, and then the board recommended do pass? So I think that at the beginning, when when I had just my smaller resolutions committee, it was a. It, 
I think in part I failed to have better wording when I said at our board meeting that if you were doing it right right now, you had nothing to worry. That sort of alleviated some of the worries because some people felt that, you know, they're already doing it, they're already doing it right, and we're opening it them up for for lawsuits and, and stuff. And that's not what it, last uh, at the last session we were asked to uh, testify in seclusion in the learning environment and and there was not a clear understanding what imminent threat of danger is and it's not um, um, they you know they felt that my, my other board felt that I almost felt threatened by the by the resolution. I, I got to tell you that I consulted with this with Megan, who sits as my superintendent, but also sits in the Act 173. And I think Jody could probably speak to to this. It is important that we use best practices and the demographic reporting. It doesn't happen in some of our most vulnerable students are the ones uh, that are being restrained. <laughs> So a lot of our practices across our districts have changed, and this is not to penalize anybody. It's the other way around, is to uh, have a common uh, uh, common guidance and best practices across it so that when we testified and the, and the legislature is asking us questions, we, this is what the definition is, right? And this is what the, the bar, I don't know, Jody, maybe you can... You're well, I think this. about the times in the last 25 years mm -hmm. that yeah. <clears throat> restraint or seclusion was used and almost every student was on some sort of plan mm -hmm. um, and some fit other profiles as well. So it might be a, a racial group, for example. Mm -hmm. So I could see if you don't, there's a form that everyone has to fill out, uh, Rule 4500, if they use restraint or seclusion on a student. Um, and there's already a law about not using it unless it's a serious situation. Um, but I can see where there's still that reporting concern if the form hasn't been updated because folks tend to just use the form that's in front of them and not necessarily provide the data that it looks like this resolution is looking for as to who is, who is being restrained. And I know um, one of our sending school districts has been in the news over this and there was reportedly a lot of restraints taking place in I think one of the elementary schools and they when looking into it it was not sanctioned by the school or done by school employees it was done by contracted mm -hmm. services from Washington County or Green Mountain um, so they had a different training and model and so I think this might be trying to get it all in alignment mm -hmm. And if the legislature talked about this in depth last, this past year, they'll be on the second half of their biennium this coming January, so they could theoretically take action. Do something, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we need guidance. In the... um, does anyone have any interest in making a motion to either pass, do not pass, or take no action? Um, Resolution I would also say in the three years that I've been here, well, this is my third year, um, I haven't seen it used at all here. <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy to make a motion if that would be helpful. No, I'll move. But, I'll, I'll make a motion to. Thank uh, you to pass as a regular resolution. Okay, thank you, Terry. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. <laughs> Lots of seconds. All right, thanks, Juliana. Okay, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Right. Okay, all right, so that's a pass as a regular resolution. And a resolution nine is pretty self-explanatory. It's just giving us another tool. So the General Assembly should amend Vermont's open meeting law to make fully remote meetings a permanent and voluntary option. 
That doesn't mean in any way that is the only option, but it just allows us to have a school board and other tool when we need a special meeting or so. And for this is another one where the recommendation is different. Yeah, to pass you know the board was to pass as a regular resolution. In my subcommittee, we had a smaller group of people that were really concerned that if you make this, a, uh, if you pass this, that means that boards are just going to move to fully remote mo uh, meetings, which means that then you you are alienated part of your population. But as a as a school board, your job is to know your community, right? And it, this is just meant to be a tool. It's not saying this is the only way that you can have a meeting. It's just giving you a tool, but that's how they felt. So that's why it was different from one to the other. But the, the board itself, it, the 22 member board passed it. I see, thank you. Yeah. So we're, the way we're operating right now, even this hybrid situation, um, that will expire, the ability to do that will expire July 1, 2024? Okay. Yeah, July 1, 2024, yeah, yeah. So this allows us to not have a designated physical location. So for example, Jody and Michelle could run a meeting without them having to be at this, you know, we wouldn't have to have a school location. <laughs> we just have to be warned. We have to be warned. Yeah, we have to be warned. But again, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a, a tool because we have found out, you know, after going through the pandemic and the way that we're operating now, that is an important tool to be able to have, uh, you know, remote meetings. You look at us right now, right? Like, <laughs> and so, so that was the intent of a resolution. It doesn't mean that because it's a resolution, the, the you know, the legislature is going to take it, but it is more than likely that we would be asked to testify on it. And if we don't have a position, then it would look mm -hmm. kind of weird. And I know the leagues of cities and towns have taken a similar resolution. Oh, interesting. Okay. So for yeah. other public meetings, they're also yeah. finding this ability useful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think to uh, have this op the option for this board is is pretty important. I mean, I've heard a couple of members a couple of times say, you know, price of gas, uh, blah blah blah. You know, I, I want to be able to be on on the meeting, but I, you know, I can't I can't see uh, you know traveling in. So, you know, based on that, I would certainly support the, the recommendation. Okay, thanks, Carl. Do I don't know if I can comment. Yeah, I think. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I know so because our advisory committee meetings are now, you know, considered part of the open meeting law. Um, and several of my board members are not local. Right. Um, I have um, a board member that lives in Arlington um, who's not going to travel all the way to Barry for a meeting. So having the virtual option, I think it's, it's useful and stuff. And then my other question is, has the community participation been any different um, in, at board meetings since the virtual option has been in place as opposed to before when they were fully in person? Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's what I was, I was sort of going to say. I think, I think this is helpful from a health perspective, right? Oh, that a couple days. <laughs> um, travel, <laughs> expense, um, access, and when... We haven't had a lot of public comment here. We and we always seem to have a pretty good crew of folks, both virtual and in person. And I don't really see that changing with this board. But um, in Montpelier, Roxbury, when we did have like a big issue, we had a ton of people who called in or listened in who probably wouldn't have been able to come in person. Um, the other thing is we have ORCA now, so they're recording it. People can look back on these. That wouldn't change. That doesn't. That that is continuing to be a really good resource. Um, it it does feel like it would be kind of a shame to take this option away. I think we would lose board members, and it would be harder for the public to access it. Not easier. Folks can still come here, but I agree. I think we should pass it as a regular. Yes, I move. 
Sorry, so we've got a motion to pass as a regular resolution. Second. I'll second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you, Carl. That's a really good point. It, it's the same with working to some extent too, right? You're, you're really limiting yourself to folks who are able and willing to drive within. Yeah. And it's how we've all been functioning on our boards and, you know. So, so the right, last so part, there's yeah. one last part. It, so yeah. and I can be quick and I'm hoping that you guys are willing to do it as a slate, which is what we will try to do at the annual meeting too. So uh, we were just going through some regular resolutions and uh, right now we're going to be looking at the continuing resolutions. We are the resolutions that we basically keep on the books, right? I put it the little blur there of what they are uh, and they're specific to the positions on behalf of the association and they are, they stay in the books literally forever continuing. So there's a few little changes that we wanted to make in some of them. Uh, so we were to delete resolution. Uh, uh, you can see it there. I, the first one, one C, in supervisory unions, and the board recommendation is just because it, this we are after Act 46. It was one resolution that was requiring <laughs> Act 46, so it's not needed anymore. Uh, the next res appointment to unified boards delete no longer needed because it was addressed in Title 16, Chapter 11. Uh, the cost containment and statewide healthcare, uh, we want to amend it as follow. You can read, I don't know if you had a chance and I don't want to read all of it, but we're basically just clarifying. So the board recommended because any legislative approach for addressing healthcare for school employees must demonstrate that it will reduce costs to school districts of the near and long term and should reflect the health insurance plan norms for the majority of Vermonters. So unless you guys had trouble with those words. And then the school choice amend as follows. So we really were, were just take, striking that sentence there. I don't know if you, should I read it, Jill, or everybody has it in front of them, right? You guys have it, yeah. Yeah. So because we'll be working again on the Carsons versus making, the board no longer agrees with leaving in place the status quo. So we wanna amend it. So that's why, the, that's why the board recommended that. And then in early education, if that was <coughs> an important. Please stop me if there's a question. And the pre-kindergarten one, are you there? The early education one? If you see this, this stricken language, the, we are just making it a lot stronger now. So is the support of fully funded full day pre-kindergarten is really important instead of just saying universal access. Please tell me if you have questions. <laughs> so I would, so Jill, you would be asking for a motion that says that a move that we amend the continuing resolutions as recommended by the VSBA board and as in the packet. I feel like only one of them applies to us. Yeah. You mean yeah. universal kindergarten? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Cost containment, is that, am I reading it right? It's just shifting cost increases to the employee? Is that how I read that? No, there's no. now a statewide health insurance. Statewide health insurance. Health insurance. That, um, it reduced it the cost reduced. of the school district. Ours keeps going up. Oh. So it was 12, it went up 12% this year. Welcome likely to go up again the same amount every yeah yeah so i think if they're going to do something different they need to make sure that they're doing something that will reduce the cost to our district. out of the norm yeah. yeah yes and that's the only one i think that applies to this district correct yeah yeah all right so, so you get a full a, vote <laughs> a motion to um, support the recommendations for edits to the continuing resolutions? Yeah. So moved. Ms. Terry, do we have a second? We 
just lost Jana. Second. Okay. Oh, Juliana. Okay, good. Juliana. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. And then, the, and then the last last part is the the regular resolutions that we already had so again they were in the packet if there's specific questions to the timely and reliable information implementation we already passed that and that issue is being resolved uh, you see the other ones I want to know more about governance of career and technical education schools. <laughs> Me too. Um, Guy? Well, I actually took the words right out of my mouth because I was reading the uh, Seven Days article today about uh, the education commissioner. And I was a little taken aback by how dysfunctional it seems to be right now in the education world. And that is really concerning as somebody who is being on a board of career and technical education. And so mm -hmm. if it's dysfunctional for the bigger part of, you know, the, the circle, then, you know, I'm really concerned about our circle and I'm wondering if there's been any discussion about that. And was there a report or anything that came out from that group? Right, didn't the legislature pass and they hired that group that we, that, that they hired the group, the group made a recommendation, there was a report that you all received in probably late April, early May, and nothing has been done with it since then. Okay. And we, we are, as the, Jill, sorry to interrupt them, just to address that issue, we, we're still working on that, we've, uh, we, we're having a meeting with with some of the legislatures about about that, but uh, some of the members legislators, not legis uh, but but yeah, Jody is correct. It's still not, but it is in our radar, and there are other existing resolutions in our book that address technical and career center. And do you know offhand? Maybe we can find it on their site. What the current BSBA resolution is for that governance career and technical education schools? Yeah, let me, I, I'll open it up. Let's see. I don't have it in I front of me. I realize it's not on the table for us to vote on, but it would be good for us to yeah. Almost there. Uh, Is is O on page six? Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. So it, we still have, but there is not resolution to me. A study should be conducted to better understand the variety of CTE governing models, operations, and budgeting structures to exist across, across the state. The study should examine an in, the inconsistent that impact the student learning. Like you said, this is, has been done. The duration of access career to location. That's that's the okay. existing okay. resolution. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Okay. So do we have a motion to agree with this recommendation for the regular resolutions? It's just this amendment, and then. To delete the shared school district financial software system one? Is that yeah, because Michelle can speak to that because it's not. <laughs> <anymore>. <laughs> okay. Michelle is probably doing a little dance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big eyes over there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do we have a motion for this last um, to concur with these recommendations? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Jim. Do you have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Terry. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, 
Um, any opposed? Okay, the eyes have it. All right, so I'll send you off into the world ready to. Got my orders. I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I hope I don't mess up that one. That, the other one. Like you said, you've got a neighbor in the room. Okay. Um, all right, great. Thanks, everybody. And of course, certainly feel free to log off at any point and say hi to your family. Thank you, Flora. Thank, Thank, Thank you, everybody. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Bye -bye. for doing that, Flora. Bye. All right. Um, so next up, we have um, our several uh, recommended policies for first reading. And I think Joey has organized them in the packet. Yeah, so the first thing I did was I took the chart that BSBA has and I linked. So if you're in our board drive folder, um, the links to all of those are here. And I had thought that I was just bringing some of the remaining not recommended ones or required, but I found out that we'd only done partial uh, list of the recommended. So these are the, the rest of the recommended policies for us to review. Remember before we had taken all of the USD policies and continued them for a year. And so now we're, we're turning them into ours um, and adopting them. So we have the C's, D's, E's and F's of the recommended left. We had done the A's and B's before. Um, I did not make any edits to these. I just put them out because this is first reading for you to review. Hopefully you had a chance to scan them <laughs> from the packet that you received late Friday. Um, one of the notes that I wanted to say though is that we did hire the equity scholar in residence um, life. And one of the things that he is working on is revising the equity policy. So he knows that this policy is in front of you. He expects that you'll probably adopt it um, as is for now. And then he hopes to come before the board in either January or February with a revision for you to consider since the board is acting as the policy committee as a whole. I also included um, under the E20, which is the community use of school facilities, the form that we have people apply to use our facilities with so that you can see how that's set up. Thought it might be helpful. So I'll, I'll take questions if there are any. Go ahead, Guy. Jody, uh, someone asked me because there was another district that was allowing a church to hold services in their school. Would we allow, would that be allowable under our facilities use at this point? Um, I think if we, the rule is that if you allow one group, you allow all. So it is fine to do so as long as you open it up to anyone and you can't say no to one group. So you sometimes you have to be careful about that because there's the perception that you as a school are supporting a certain point of view. Um, so the choice would be, yes, we open it up to anybody or no, we don't to these certain groups. And I'm going to need to look at it. Sure Go ahead. Would that mean something as simple as opening it up to a middle school model rocketry group that wanted to use our labs or our workspace? Is that automatically? They're not. They're not a. They don't have a position. No, that they're automatically something that we could consider because they're um, a school group. But would that open it up for everybody then? It's like, like, but like, can we say like nobody can use our space or everybody can use our space? Or is that? It's not quite that broad, but if if you if you were to have a specific, I think Guy said church group come in and say that they wanted so say the um one of the there's a lot of churches downtown, so one of them chooses to have a group meeting here for some reason. 
then if we decide that we're going to open it up to them, then we would need to allow any group. Um, in previous life, not here, I know that there has been the concern that if you open it up to a specific nonprofit group, um, you have to allow another nonprofit that might not share the same beliefs or ones that the school would want represented. So oftentimes it's, if it's anything that is discriminatory in any way, you wouldn't want to support it with the school. So you need to make sure that none of them are discriminatory. And so we're, we're a little bit, um, I'm trying to remember whether our policy is aligned with the BUUSD at this point, correct or no? It is, yes. And it is. Yeah, but we also are somewhat constrained in terms of, you know, we're also leasing property. So, you know, we have to be careful that we don't violate any of those policies. Correct. And mostly we're looking at our spaces because they would have special uses. So over the last year, there's only actually been a couple of requests to use space. There was a request to use um, our baking and culinary facility in conjunction with the Spalding cafeteria for an event. And so the, the folks who did that had to apply to us and to um, BUSD because they wanted to use some of the equipment in the kitchen that we have in our culinary. And then the other two requests we had were for um, Vermont Works for Women. One was for an evening um, course that we did hold here. And then one was for the summer welding program that they chose to do elsewhere because of the cost. So based on uh, what Jody, you know, just explained in terms of the policies, I'll make a motion to um, approve the list of policies for first reading that's presented for this evening. Thanks, Guy. Second. Second by Lyman. Any further discussion? And this is first reading. I think they go through first reading, then second reading, and then third reading. You can't adopt at second reading, but um, you, don't have so to. you are going to have some changes to any of these for the second reading? No, the district equity policy will come back this year, but not soon enough. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor say aye. Any aye. opposed? No. Great. Sky. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for all that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot. All right. Next up, we're just going to go through committee reports. So, do we have an update from the finance committee? Oh, I don't think we do. You let Floor go. I let Floor go. <laughs> and that makes me um, and you. We just really quickly reviewed the um, budget timeline that we have. And we are going to bring back um, to our next meeting our first draft. And and I guess what was enlightening for me was that Floor told me I had to wear my director's hat and not my superintendent hat and bring a wish list to the committee so they could see, like, if we could do everything that we wanted to do next year, short of having a brand new building, um, what would it look like? And so the finance committee can work from there. So. Discuss the audit, which is ongoing. Um, I hope to have to report to the uh, finance committee at the beginning of December so that we can be able to bring that to the board. Um, so, budget will be a big focus of our next couple meetings because I think we need to finalize it in probably January, I think, so we can get materials out, tax rates um, calculated. Um, materials out to the public so that by town meeting day, everyone knows what we need and why we need it. And, okay, awesome, thank you. Uh, do we have an update from the facilities committee? Yeah, um, we wanted to bring two recommendations to you guys for some committee members to add to the committee, um, Andy Shapiro and Mike like later, who's the um, superintendent, uh, I believe, Harwood. Um, Great. So both of them would like to join and, and assist us. So 
you think that's great. <laughs> We've got a, a little bit of help coming our way. Um, and then we spent a lot of time talking about our SMART goal and filling out our template. Um, we didn't quite get to the goal, writing the goal in the meeting, but I uh, drafted one and sent it to the, the committee um, for review. So not everyone's gotten back to me yet, but um, so I think we're well on our way to the SMART goal. Awesome. Thank you. And we did a little revision to our charter as well, um, added something in there. And, that was kind of it. Jody, did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. So does the board need to formally like approve? I don't I think any member can, I think our articles of agreement or something say we can have members of the community participate on the subcommittees because they don't have like um voting Correct. power the way that we're members do. That's great. I'm glad yeah, you guys have some outside voices. Yeah, that was something we weren't clear on. We didn't know if we could just bring them on board or if we needed the board to say it was okay. So. Maybe we should just be saying. <laughs> um, we'll just, we can just, um, I'm looking for a motion to um, add to members of the community to the facilities um, subcommittee um, at, in an advisory capacity. So moved. Thank you. Second? I'll second, Guy. Thanks, Guy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's exciting. And um, we still have a quorum, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> There's six. Okay. Um, program quality committee. Uh, we had a good meeting today. We we finished our goal and we finished our charter for the uh for the handbook and we third thing that we talked about that was oh exciting as part of our goal our measurement is to look at several different key pieces of data that are collected both in the fall and the spring on student achievement uh the work keys which gives us a benchmark for this fall and then we'll be able to look at it again the spring, which I'm, I'm excited about, and then including some uh, different parts of reflection for both students and teachers eventually. So it was it was a good meeting. And you both attended advisory <clears throat> board meetings. And we both attended advisory board meetings, and they were fantastic. Um, and I think we've got some leads for co-op and internships and all sorts of good stuff. Thank you very much for your input. I went to building trades um, and I mean Izzy. Yep. Uh, so King Craig was there as well as a timber frame company. That's fantastic. And then Jana went to medical Medipro, professions. Right? Yep. That's really impressed with their with their Jedi program, the mm -hmm. justice, equity, equity and inclusion. Right. Um, next up would be negotiations, but we are going to go into executive session later on the agenda. <coughs> give you folks an update. Um, all right. Next up, we have board handbook draft. I think that's a placeholder just to remind us that we're going to be reviewing this in earnest in coming meetings. Because <coughs> eventually we want to sort of approve our handbook. We want to have it done before. New folks. Okay. March. March. Okay. Do you need any any action or anything from the rest of the board? I think the other committees were finishing their charters, and once we have that, we're good. Right? Yeah. So we might be able to vote on it next meeting. Right. Uh, next up, we have our superintendent's report. Just, just, um, we have almost everybody has completed OSHA 10 or the safety exams for their program. So um, we have 
very high pass rates. And this year we, we did a little differently. So we're really excited about that. We've seen uh, improved safety across our program. So that's also been helpful. You see that some of the groups have already taken field trips. We've had students going out on career work experiences, which were previously called job shadows. And our teachers went through their professional development statewide. So they're called tech meetings, TEC. And um, they've been able to go to those and meet with their peers from across the state. It happens once a semester, basically. Um, so I think teachers came back from that with some new ideas and some updated understandings of, of what they're doing. You might have seen in the last one that Abby and I, our counseling coordinator, went to the U32 open house. When they invited us, I basically sent to all the sending schools and asked if they would like us to attend since one school asked. Harwood was the only other one that wanted us there, so I was able to go there um, on September 28th and mostly talk with middle school students and parents because they were the ones that kept finding me. Um, and then really exciting last week, um, actually on October 9th, I received an email from a liaison to the governor who asked if we could meet Wednesday after afternoon with any <laughs> instructors who might be working on um, a renovation of a mobile home. Basically, they the AOE and the governor offered four CT centers, $24,000 gear grant, which had to be spent in literally two days. Um, <laughs> we got it September 28th, and we had to spend it by the 30th um, to, uh, to buy supplies to renovate a mobile home that we had not seen at all. And so, so we ordered, basically we used it to order supplies that we would <laughs> in any of our programs anyways. And we're, we bought a storage unit to put that stuff in. Um, and then on October 9th, we got the word that we were gonna be able to tour some so that our instructors could take a look at what we would be working on. Um, the instructors came and so did the assistant director and myself and met with the governor and his staff. We toured two different mobile home parks in Berlin um, and along with the River, River Bend Tech Center director, Brian Emerson. Um, and we chose a 2023 double wide mobile home, um, which will be delivered sometime in the next month to our building trades location. And um, we'll be taking that apart a little bit and renovating and, and then we'll put it up for sale. So hopefully by trades fair, we'll have it available for people to tour and to potentially bid on. Um, and then when we take from that sale, we have to pay back those gear funds, the 24,000. Anything above and beyond that is, is ours as a center to use towards our programs or whatever else. It's probably gonna cost more than that to fix it up. Um, super enlightening to, to see what happened in those homes. And so sad that for the owner of this particular home that like really recently installed and then lost it. Um, so really sad for what I know some of our students probably lived in those homes, folks that we know. Yeah. Any questions on the superintendent's report? Guy? Yeah, a question, a couple comments. So Jody, I want to commend you for uh, advertising for a welding instructor, uh, put together a curriculum person. Uh, I, I guess I don't know where that person's going to be, but uh, maybe we can talk about that later. Um, the other question I had, I was trying to, to piece together the relationship with the green burial piece in Roxbury in your newsletter. Um, <laughs> so it was a digital media arts student who created the logo on that sign oh okay all right okay yep and the welding instructor basically even though we don't have an approved program as long as we're not enrolling students we can move forward with hiring that person can develop the curriculum for the welding program that we hope to have approved for next year and right now we can use them to support some of our programming for instance we do have some welding that takes place in automotive 
so that person could support automotive during the student day and then be working on the welding components of building that curriculum for next year so that we have a course built in Canvas, for example, and also help us in looking for a place. Um, also, we're looking obviously for where we might house that program and thinking a little differently about our own space if we're full day next year and we can have automotive in the morning and use the same space for welding in the afternoon, that might help us in the interim. Sounds great. Jody, did you want to say anything about, I saw you were looking for members or people who might be interested in serving on the comprehensive local assessment yeah, so every two years we have to do the comprehensive local needs assessment and basically we need partners from across all stakeholder groups. So parents, students, staff, a board member. I know Guy, you volunteered and someone else did too. It might have been Jana. Um, and also industry representatives. So I sent that to the board. I sent it to every person on our advisory list even if they didn't show up for advisory meeting this today. So I have um, six folks that have already responded that they were interested in participating. I don't have any parents yet, but I intend to reach out to them again, the next newsletter, which is going out tomorrow, because I wanted some, some uh, program advisory stuff to be in there and a couple other things. So I'm hoping that I will get some parents. Basically, we're gonna meet once a month. It's a virtual meeting with this room as an option as well. And I, the first meeting is November 9th. Basically, I'll just go over what the process is and the things that we'll be looking for at and the things we might need to answer. And then we'll move through each section of the CLNA. So the good news is I've done this once. And so I think I have a better idea of how to approach it, hopefully. Um, but from this, we look at a lot of data, we gather a lot of information and try to make decisions around future programming for the center and how we can better meet the needs of the region and state. And also it helps develop the four year plan for our Perkins. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for listening. I want to serve on that, but I'm glad you heard back from some people. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, um, moving on on the agenda, uh, advisory board reflections. I think we got those. We got them in uh, from Bro program quality. Did you kind of float? Did you have to kind of float around? I actually didn't. I had hoped to, um, but decided that I'm not going to go. I'm actually Spring doing really time. well tonight and not coughing. But yeah. How often do they? Um, Advisory boards meet in the fall and the spring. Okay. And so I've sent a survey out to my staff to see did they meet their quorum because they also need that and how did this work for them um, to see if we're going to do it again in April or if we need to look at other options. In the past it's been done basically the instructor sets it up at a time that works best for the majority of folks in that industry. So um, a lot of I know that the medical ones tended to be in the morning because people were working in the afternoon or um, baking and culinary might choose a time when most restaurants are closed. So trying to sort through that this time might not have been appropriate for a lot of folks. Um, I know building trades, for example, didn't meet the quorum. So it's probably because folks are still working mm -hmm. and not able to attend. So we're, we're going to kind of look at is there another way to do this? The hard part is if you have them all spread out there's less access for all of you to potentially participate. And it's hard to warn all those meetings because they are public meetings. So it was something we tried first yeah. time. We'll yeah. see see what the feedback is. Um, Guy? Yeah, I just want to pass along as a board member. And I, I think we as a board, you know, really appreciate the fact that we have another layer of, of people that are, you know, passing along their knowledge uh, you know, to our students and to our program. So I, I just want to say I'm really appreciative. Uh, I wasn't able to attend today, but I've been to a few in the past, and it's very valuable. So I want to pass along my appreciation. Thank you. And the open house is coming up next month. Is it before our next board meeting? One month from today, October, uh, November 16th. <clears throat> great, great. Um, 
Um, next up is accounts payable. Were there any particular things you guys needed to raise? Those were those were sent to us each month, and then the board has given Jody rights to sign the, the warrant. So those are in good hands. Okay, I don't need to take any action there unless anyone has any questions. All right, um, and I do think we have one one person we're losing, unfortunately. Lost. Oh, that's so tough. Yeah, so we, we hired a STEM coordinator, um, a science teacher from Idaho, and she took the leap and moved here by herself, leaving behind her husband and three children in the hopes that they would be able to sell their home and follow her quickly. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. And um, I cannot imagine, <clears throat> apart from my, if I had three kids, one at like six years old and, and up, um, how that would feel to be watching them for over a month from a video chat and not in person. And it was really hard on her. Um, and so she did, she did kick off some really great projects in some of our programs. And we, I do have exit survey information from her about where it was difficult. Um, and I think that there are ways that we could have supported her better and maybe made it a little easier, but ultimately without kind of market in Idaho that we have here in Vermont. Um, she just couldn't make the leap this time. So she did end up leaving us in September, um, unfortunately, and we are seeking someone else to fill that role. She did a great job with the folks that she worked with when she was here. All right. Um, next up, if someone could read the motion to go to executive session for a negotiations committee update, would you hopefully put it in the agenda so that I move that the board enter into executive session for the purpose of a negotiations update as <clears throat> premature general public knowledge would clearly place the board in the association involved at a substantial disadvantage. In addition, we'd like to invite Superintendent Judy, Judy Emerson into the executive session. Great, thank you. Do I have a second? Yeah. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. Second. Okay. Hi. Great. So Jody's just.